The Gulf of Mexico is one of the world's most fertile breeding grounds for endangered sea turtles. So when hundreds of dead turtles, among other animals, began washing up on Gulf shores soon after the BP oil spill, each carcass was treated like evidence in a vast murder case, bagged, frozen, and shipped to labs for autopsy. We basically have uh, carcasses categorized by state. But the cause of death has been far from obvious. Dr. Brian Stacy is a veterinarian at the University of Florida. He's now part of a massive federal investigation to determine what's killed more than 440 of these endangered animals since late April. At least half of them were found in Mississippi. So this is a, a Kemp's Ridley. It was found uh, floating northeast of, of uh, Cat Island in Mississippi. One of the puzzling things is that so far, most of the turtles showed no visible signs of oil contamination. And so the question is, if oil didn't kill them directly, what did? You know, drowning is a, a concern, as is acute exposure to a, a toxin. Dr. Stacy dissects each turtle looking for clues. Meanwhile, new specimens keep coming. Most of the animals we, we have been finding are from right here. Moby Salangi heads the Institute for Marine Mammal Studies in Gulfport, which typically sees about 15 dead turtles a year. We did our annual quota in about four or five days. Uh, then the question was, why are they still coming? The oil wasn't here. Soon after that, Louisiana opened its shrimping season earlier than normal. And then in one day, we got about 27 or 28. The next day, we got another 14 or 15. And so the currents and the tide, if the animals died in Louisiana, brought them right into Mississippi. Well, we got a call about a shrimper who had caught him in his net. And uh, he wasn't sure if he was still alive or not, so he put him on deck. Shrimp boats pose the greatest danger to sea turtles because they tow their nets underwater for long periods, and turtles trapped in them are unable to come up for air. To prevent turtles from drowning, NOAA Fisheries requires shrimp trawlers to install an escape hatch in their nets, called a turtle excluder device, or TED. See the brown globs? Look, there's all right there. Days before Mississippi closed its waters to fishing, Lieutenant Donald Arms of the Mississippi Marine Patrol was out inspecting shrimp boats for proper gear. So right now, if we get it, see anybody fishing in there, we'll stop, have a little chat with them. We'll measure the trial, make sure they have a TED installed. They don't have one, it's a violation. It's federal law, they mu must have one. Then we also have what we call skimmer trials. They have right now a 30 minute time limit. It used to be 55, last week we knocked it down to 30. So there's such, such an influx on the turtles. This skimmer boat had plenty of other bycatch, but checked out okay. Not much shrimp, huh? Right now, a lot of fishermen have gone to work, gone to work for BP. We don't have now maybe 20 boats a night is all we have catching all the shrimp in Mississippi. How you doing this evening? I right, want to come on, take a look at your Ted and that this evening. Even though far fewer shrimpers were working in Louisiana and Mississippi this season, illegal activity has been up. Open a shrimp season opened June 3rd this year. We've had three violations just for turtles. Meanwhile, in Louisiana, there have been no such violations. That's because Louisiana refuses to enforce TED regulations, despite evidence that more turtles are dying in shrimping nets. Uh, we did about 40 necropsies on the f first few that came in. Approximately 20 or 21 of them had sediment in their lungs, which is indicative of drowning because they may have gotten into the fishing nets. Some speculate that turtles fleeing the oil spill are being driven closer to shore and into greater peril. We just removed a fish hook. It was incidental catch off of the uh, docks of uh, the Waveland Pier in Waveland, Mississippi. In a normal year, the Institute for Marine Mammal Studies might see one or two turtles caught on fishing hooks. This year, it's already seen 20. As the habitat has been shrinking, these animals were looking for areas uh, which were you know, clear of oil. The change in the habitat, which I consider as uh, a forest on fire, and the confusion in the habitat, which animals moving and running and going to areas that uh, they may not have been in large numbers. A lot of times our evidence is indirect. You know, in the necropsy lab, Dr. Stacy knows there won't be any single culprit for the hundreds of carcasses he dissects, but he still finds telling clues. This is the... Uh Typical sea turtle esophagus, these are uh, called esophageal papillae. And I can already see something significant in here. 
Um, there's a, a piece of shrimp. You don't see shrimp consumed as a, as a part of the normal diet. Shrimp are very fast. Uh, the most plausible scenario where an animal would be able to ingest shrimp is, is in, a, in a fisher's net. Okay, so this is another uh, immature Kemp's Ridley. Uh, it was recovered in uh, Orleans Parish in Louisiana. Um, it was observed to have what was called an oily substance on the outside as well as what was suspected to be oil uh, in the mouth. Now this, this animal is in a, a, a lesser nutritional state, as I said, with the, the fat stores, but that's also telling that it hadn't been eating. So there's some material in the lungs that looks like this animal probably had an acute pneumonia. So we'll collect some. Dr. Stacy found no visible trace of oil in this turtle, but pneumonia has been associated with exposure to oil fumes. The tissues of all 440 or so turtles will eventually be tested. And in the end, if the oil spill is a factor, that will determine how many millions of dollars the BP will pay in penalties, which are greater for endangered species. And perhaps more importantly, it will provide information about the long and short-term effects of oil on wildlife. So now these animals are exposed. It's important that we study and at least be able to find out if indeed uh, certain components of crude oil or the dispersant had any effect on it. Or if we don't do that, we will be speculating all day long. So there's a lot of documentation involved with this. So.